According to their chief technical officer, Panasonic is working to increase the capacity of the 2170 batteries that they produce for Tesla at Gigafactory Nevada, and the CTO also revealed when Panasonic plans to commercialize their own 4680 batteries. So follow along with me as I discuss these exciting battery updates and how Tesla will benefit from this. I'm John, and this is Cleaner Watt. Panasonic is a really important Tesla battery partner, and they currently manufacture around 37 plus gigawatt hours of 2170 batteries per year at Gigafactory Nevada, but according to their CTO, between now and 2025, they have a goal of increasing that production by 10%. On this topic, here's an exact quote from this Bloomberg interview video, but do note that the CTO was speaking in Japanese. So these exact quotations are from an English translator voiceover in the video. But nonetheless, in this Bloomberg interview, specifically about Gigafactory Nevada, it was stated, quote, between now and 2025, we will further increase battery capacity and manufacturing efficiency by 5%, which amounts to a 10% increase in overall production. We are promoting improvements in development and productivity. Notice that Panasonic is going to reach this 10% production increase with two 5% increases. One in production efficiency, which of course is important, but the other 5% is going to come from increasing the energy density of the battery cell. Now, once again, Panasonic currently builds around 37 gigawatt hours of batteries per year at Gigafactory Nevada. So with a 10% increase, that should improve to over 40 gigawatt hours per year, which is a nice little boost. In addition, it shouldn't take a long time for that to happen because their CTO said between now and 2025. So sometime this year, that could happen. We could see that 5% increase in the um, efficiency of manufacturing and a 5% increase in the energy of each of the 2170 battery cells. If Tesla keeps the same number of 2170 battery cells in their vehicles, for example, this 5% energy increase could lead to a 5% range increase. Of course, Tesla could include less cells in the battery pack to save costs, but since the EPA range of the Tesla Model Y, for example, recently was lowered due to an EPA testing change, a 5% energy increase of the Model Y battery pack could get those EPA ranges pretty close to where they were before. Now, when it comes to which vehicles have the Panasonic made 2170 batteries right now, as far as I can tell, the Model 3 that's made in the USA, even the long range version does not have 2170 batteries. And of course, the rear wheel drive version has um, LFP batteries made by CATL. But when it comes to the Model Y, as far as I know, each one of those three variants that are available right now do have Panasonic 2170 batteries. As far as I know, the rear wheel drive Model Y that's built here in the USA that does not have an LFP battery pack, but instead has a software locked 2170 battery pack. And I believe it's the same battery pack that's found in the long range all wheel drive Model Y. It's just software locked to around 60 kilowatt hours or so. So very possibly that would not see a 5% increase, but maybe it would. But I especially believe that the long range all wheel drive and performance versions could see an increase. Once again, the long range all wheel drive version equipped with 19 inch wheels, that EPA range went from 330 miles previously to the most recent EPA rating of 310 miles. The performance version went from 303 miles to 285 miles. If you add an extra 5% of range from the 2024 range estimates there for the long range and performance versions of the Model Y, you can see that the EPA range could very well be very close to the previous ratings. And since this range would be with an extra 5% of battery capacity versus the old battery capacity, this could lead to a real world range that's actually quite close to the EPA rated range. So based on Panasonic's timeline, I believe this change could happen sometime later on this year. Now, moving on to another topic, specifically regarding Panasonic's 4680 battery production. In that Bloomberg interview video, it was mentioned, quote, we are preparing for production in Wakayama, Japan. We have already completed the building and are now installing the production facilities. Since we are basically on time with both developments and production preparations, we think it's possible to start production in the first half of fiscal 2024. Now this mention of the first half of fiscal 2024 is a little bit confusing because if you go to Panasonic's um, investors website, and you look at what their fiscal year is, according to this, their fiscal year 2024 ends on March 
31st. So this means that right now we are already past their first half of the fiscal year of 2024. Based on past information, like for example in this Reuters article from May of 2023, it appears like either the translator in this video or the CTO meant to say the first half of fiscal year 2025. Because Panasonic's fiscal year 2025 will be starting in April of this year. This corresponds with what was written in Panasonic's Q2 fiscal year 2024 investors presentation, where it was written under the heading commercialization of 4680 battery cells, quote, mass production at Wakayama rescheduled to begin during 1H, meaning first half, fiscal year 325, so that higher density technologies can be introduced to further enhance competitiveness. So when you put this all together, it looks like Panasonic plans to commercialize their own 4680 battery cells sometime between April and September of this year. So that's actually quite soon. Now, it is important to note here that this first Panasonic 4680 battery production facility in Japan will likely only produce around 10 gigawatt hours of 4680 batteries per year fully ramped up, according to what was previously reported in this Nikkei Asia article. But hopefully when the Wakayama facility is fully ramped up, Panasonic will um, start producing these batteries at another facility, hopefully in the United States, like for example, their new Kansas factory. That would be a great place to do that in the future. And hopefully that'll happen because Tesla can use as many 4680 batteries as possible. But nonetheless, 10 gigawatt hours of batteries would still be a huge bonus. For example, since the Tesla Cybertruck has a 123 kilowatt hour battery pack, 10 gigawatt hours of batteries per year would be enough to build over 81,000 Cybertrucks per year. In addition, according to a past update, at Gigafactory Texas, Tesla was building batteries at a rate of around 3 gigawatt hours per year. And that number is probably a little higher now because they have had some time between that past update and now, and they are ramping up their Texas facility and building out more lines. But nonetheless, let's just say that number is 5 gigawatt hours per year, an annual run rate of 5 gigawatt hours per year. If Panasonic can quickly, by the end of this year, be ramped up to 10 gigawatt hours, that would be a huge boost to Tesla's available 4680 batteries, assuming that they purchase all that Panasonic can produce. And that's what I'm assuming, because Tesla needs all the 4680 batteries they can get their hands on to make sure that they have enough to ramp up the Cybertruck in the future. I believe they have enough 4680 batteries right now for their current ramp, but as the Cybertruck continues to ramp, they're going to need more. And in addition, they probably want to start using 4680 batteries in the Model Y at some point again in the future, and I believe also in the Tesla Semi. Now regarding Panasonic's 4680 batteries, I discussed this in a previous video, but Panasonic's 4680 battery is going to be different than Tesla's. Because last I heard from a reliable source, Tesla was not sharing their 4680 battery tech with Panasonic, but Panasonic developed their own design. For example, while Tesla's 4680 battery is a tabless design, Panasonic's battery will not be tabless, but instead will have a multi-tab design. In addition, Panasonic will be using a traditional wet electrode manufacturing process and not a dry process. It's definitely going to be interesting to see how the performance of these Panasonic 4680 batteries compare to Tesla's 4680 batteries, especially their second gen battery when it comes to energy density and charging performance. In theory, Tesla's tabless battery design appears to be superior to a multi-tap design, not only on the manufacturing side, but also when it comes to lowering battery cell resistance, which equals better thermal performance of a battery cell. But maybe Panasonic's multi-tap design will end up having better performance. Now, moving back to that Bloomberg interview, Panasonic's CTO was asked about how their 4680 batteries compared to their 2170 batteries and why automakers would want to switch over to the 4680 format. In response to that, it was mentioned, quote, since the size of the battery is five times larger from the car manufacturer's point of view, the number of batteries is reduced to one fifth and the number of connecting parts and the number of welding processes can be reduced to one fifth. I understand that this is a big advantage for them. Having less battery cells in a battery pack is definitely a huge advantage when it comes to the manufacturing side. Um, but five times the size does not necessarily mean five times the amount of energy if the 4680 batteries are not quite as energy dense as the 2170 batteries, for example. And a good example of that is with the standard range all-wheel drive Model Y that Tesla no longer produces, but that vehicle had first generation 4680 
battery cells with lower than expected energy density. And with 828 battery cells, that vehicle only had a max EPA rated range with 19 inch tires of 279 miles, quite a bit less than long range all wheel drive Model Y, which had 330 miles of EPA rated range at that time. With that being said, how many watt hours are needed in each 4680 battery cell for them to actually have five times the amount of energy? Well, according to information that I received previously from a reliable source, each 2170 battery built at Gigafactory Nevada has approximately 18.4 watt hours per battery cell. So for the 4680 batteries to have five times that, each battery cell would need to have 92 watt hours of energy. Tesla's first generation 4680 battery cell did not have five times the energy. It only had between 83 to 86.5 watt hours per battery cell, depending on how you measure the watt hours of that battery cell. However, Tesla's new second generation 4680 battery cells that are found in the Cybertruck, those do appear to have around five times the energy of a 2170 battery cell. So this is a great step. And in addition, Tesla's third generation battery cells that I talked about in a past video that are in development right now, according to information that was shared by Joe Tegmeyer on x.com, I expect that each one of those battery cells should have over 100 watt hours of energy per battery cell, which of course would be a huge bonus and could greatly increase the range of the Cybertruck. Do let me know what you think about all this in the comment section below, I'd love to hear from you. And also I'd like to say once again, thank you to all of those of you who support me through Patreon. Your support makes a big difference and really does help make these videos possible. If you'd like to find out more about how you can support my work through Patreon, I will put a link in the video description. Thank you so much.